Welcome to PowerCat Live. I am here with Greg Lindhorst. He is the principal PM architect for PowerFX. Greg, what is PowerFX? Well, Phil, PowerFX is the formula language that we currently have in Canvas Power Apps. What we're going to do is we're going to take that and, and use it across the entire Power Platform, make it available in Power Virtual Agents, in Dataverse for calculated columns, in model-driven apps for commanding. And eventually, we'll put it in Power Automate and in other places across the, the Power Platform as well. And in addition to that, we're going to make it available as an open source offering so people can introduce it and, and integrate it with their own products and make it available that way. So it, it's it's taking that core Excel-like language that we, we've been using for a while that has been very successful at tapping into the millions of people that know Excel and can use that to get going and building their own logic. I appreciate that. I started in Excel many, many years ago programming, so this uh, speaks to my heart. Yeah, many have. So so you've, you've got this role where you are basically designing a programming language that you know is going to be used by millions. How did you get to this role? I came to this role, I've, I've worked at the company for a while. I started in Visual Studio on, on Fortran, of all things, in the early 90s. Uh, and grew into Visual Basic.net, into Visual Interdev, which was a short-lived little product that went on when the internet popped. I remember it. Yeah. And then I, I started veering towards low-code, no-code solutions for office people and spent a number of years in office working on SharePoint, on Access, on Excel itself um, as, as a, a really great place to express logic for everybody and not just people that were trained as professional developers. And then it all kind of comes together where we are with Power Apps. It is... Uh, it's a product and the language is a, is a tool for people that don't know programming, have never spent any time thinking about programming, don't consider themselves programmers, don't mm -hmm. want to be programmers. They have a day job, they have something they just need to get done. They're, they're accustomed to using tools like Excel or Access or SharePoint. If we can leverage those, those ideas for them to be able to create a simple little app, then they can be, make their, 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 their business much more effective, their, right. their processes more efficient. Um, we have countless uh, examples of people that never thought they would be building apps or logic, but they are now, and they're being very successful with it. And because they're embedded in their organization, they understand the business need better than anyone. So I, I was drawn to that problem space, and it's been very gratifying to be able to bring it to, to where we are now with PowerFX. It's, I've worked with a lot of those people, too, and it's interesting to see these people that don't consider themselves software developers and to see how once they get started in this, they grow and they learn more and more. And now they're talking about, you know, uh, you know, schemas and JSON, right? And how it just grows. Now, I, I know one question you get a lot is, this is low code. Why are we talking about a programming language? It's low code because we need to have a common language that everybody can communicate through. We, we have found that building applications, building logic, building apps is very much a team sport. It is not something that one person can really do in isolation for very long. Even mm -hmm. the people that start out and build something simple, they end up needing to draw in a designer or a professional developer or somebody who manages the database to help them connect it into with the rest of the business to make it really, really run. And then often those apps become mission critical and then a professional developer needs to come in and, and manage it from that point forward. So you need a language that can really span a large spectrum. It can, it can reach down to the person who just knows Excel's formula language all the way up to somebody who writes C-sharp and, and JavaScript and, and SQL for a living. And so the, having a language that can span that great spectrum is, is really powerful. And we Microsoft has tried in various guises to do this in the past. We've had v, VBA, which was augmenting Excel, but it was a different, it was, it was separated from it. There was a big cliff between the two. If right. you knew Excel, its expression language was not the same as the one inside of VBA. And so you had to relearn something if you were to go to, to try to do something more advanced. We, it's very important to us to, to create that seamless, no cliff uh, uh, landscape where somebody can start out really easy and then have other people join them that can add more complicated, more com complexity, more power to that um, directly in the language. And they can all talk to and, and see what each other is doing directly. Another element of this is, is, is scan, scaling all the way down to no code. There's lots of scenarios where you shouldn't even have to write a formula. That, but if the formula is simple enough, we can create builders that can write those formulas for you. Mm. And some of the technology we've been working on is natural language processing that can write a formula based on you telling us the, the problem you're trying to solve. That's fascinating. So it's a, it's a great middle ground, um, a great textual representation that, that a professional can, can see in VS Code and check into GitHub, but at the same time, something a no code builder can emit and can read and write. 
Um, and it, it's right at that sweet spot, we hope. So now one of the things I know from hearing you talk, like as we have discussions with PowerCAD and other groups around just solving problems and trying to solve customer problems, you're looking at a long-term view of how this language evolves, right? So these questions that come up, like why aren't there while loops and how, why can't I index an individual item in a collection, right? You, you're making decisions that are sometimes, you know, looking at the long view and difficult in the short term. What's that like? It, it's, yeah. it can be hectic. Um, we, we, get, <laughs> we get pinged all the time with some people saying, Where, where's my while loop or yeah. where, where are my variables? Why can't I just set the property of a control as opposed yeah. to having to write a formula that defines its value? Yeah. Um, and it, it comes from a philosophical perspective that that for a professional developer can feel a little foreign. They have to get, kind of get their head around. Um, and that can take some time. It does. But we're trying to create a very safe place to express logic. If you think about a while loop, it's relatively easy to write an infinite while loop that never ends. And it may not intentionally, but you just you set up a condition, the condition's never met, and now it, it's, it. it's, it's really yeah. in a weird place, and you don't know what's happening. We're far better off if we can find solutions that don't require spinning and waiting for something to occur. And so that way, that's what we, the direction we've gone in. On the question of, of array indices, we work with tables that come from SQL that could have millions of records. Yeah. We don't want to be in a position where we have to necessarily get to, to 900,000 record. Um, we don't want to be able to say that. Now, that said, there are, there are definitely scenarios for it. And I, I'm hoping in the near future, we'll be able to put indices on stuff that's in memory. If we have a collection that's purely in memory, well, we have the whole thing there. Indexing yeah. the 10th item, that should be easy to do. And people do it all the time right now with first and last mm -hmm. end, which is really clunky. Yeah. Um, we should be able to do better than that. And that's the, the, the kind of improvement if we can if we can scope it to just in memory collections and people understand that, then that, that's the kind of enhancement we'll make. Um, but we, 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 we had to be very conscious. We were trying to keep the number of concepts a person needs to understand to an absolute minimum. Yeah. It, before we do before we do square brackets with a number in it to index, we may use the index function that comes from Excel because that's their solution to this problem right now. Now we actually talk to the Excel team quite a bit. They are also thinking about array indices and 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 hmm. having arrays more more powerful. And they've got um, record syntax for what goes into the cell. They've got all kinds hmm. of great stuff coming. Um, we want to make sure we're consistent with that because our PowerFX its main claim to fame is it, it it leverages all that Excel knowledge. If you know Excel really well you already know PowerFX. We need to stay there. As those guys evolve, we need to be in lockstep with them and, and do things in a similar manner. So it these there's a lot of, lot of discussions, lots of considerations that go into those decisions about, should we add this feature or not add this feature? If we add this concept, do we really need this concept? Is there not a better way that doesn't require adding another concept? One more thing that our people have to put in their head to be effective when they read this. Every time we add something new, it's one more thing that might confuse yeah. somebody who's seen the language for the first time and they has to go look up, what does the square bracket notation mean? Well, I prefer they didn't have to think that way. They have, right. they have to go look it up, that everything should be very consistent and very simple, if at all possible. That coordination with the Excel team, too, is something that probably not a lot of people know, right? The similarity with Excel is not coincidental or no, an no, accident. We, yeah, there's a number of functions they've added and we've added, like the sequence function. Um, the switch function, the, those are just ones the last couple of years we've done. They just added a Lambda function. Uh, we also are adding functions for reuse um, and we're, we're communicating about the best way to do that. Um, so there, there's a lot of discussion that goes back and forth. I won't be, I'll make no mistake, they're the big dog here. They, they go their <laughs> way and we somewhat follow, but we do give them some input about the direction that would be good for both of our products and try to do that in a consistent manner. We are hot on their heels. It's only a yeah, matter of time. Yeah, it's, only, yeah. it's only a few decades away. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is also going to be open source, as you mentioned, and you talked about your maybe sometimes internal struggle on the direction the language should take. How do you how do you shape this language in kind of the way you describe and still make it open source? Well, open source allows us to to put it out there for everybody to consume and and to give us issues and ideas and. And mm -hmm. tell us about the language and where they they can use it and use and it, where they where they see application for it. And since the announcement, it's been amazing. The amount of of suggestions and thoughts and scenarios that are just coming out of the woodwork are are it, it's blown us away. We really had no idea it would be this big. Um, so that's wonderful. Um, if you look at GitHub right now, there's issues and pull requests just against the documentation because we have no code up there yet. But people are so passionate. They're like, you need to fix this in the docs, and this needs to be talked about. And it's like, great. What a dream, right? It's awesome, yeah. even at these early days. Th that it's open source doesn't necessarily that we lose control over it. 
We will, mm -hmm. the, the main GitHub repository, we will control and we'll have, we'll have these open discussions and we'll, we'll have, we'll listen carefully to all the feedback we get from people. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we'll direct the PowerFX language, much like the TypeScript team directs the, the evolution That's of that language. Um, so we'll still be in control and we'll still be very cautious about adding new concepts that we have to be very, very deliberate when we do that. Um, and that'll probably be the hardest part, especially for people that are professional developers coming into yeah. this. They'll want more and more professional developer features and be like, no, we, we got to keep it low code. Yeah. Um, that's important to be able to reach down. So that those there'll be there'll be some great discussions, I'm sure, in the future on that. So so what's planned next for PowerFX? What's on the horizon? Well, this year we're all about the 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 virtual power virtual agents and uh, and dataverse and model driven apps and getting out to open source. Th that's our our focus for sure for this year. Um, there's a couple of other things we may do. We we are, we've been talking to some external companies that may want we may want to partner with. They were very interested in helping us getting that first open source uh, version out the door. Um, so there's there's we got plenty on our plate for that. But there's also improvements we're planning for PowerFX. Um, independent of just making it go more places and be open source, we're planning to add the ability to have named formulas. There's something in Excel called the Name Manager, yeah. which is a very old '80s style UI. It, it really Man, you made me feel old just now, <laughs> but it's it's there. And what's great about it is that today people use global variables to set up state um, in their on start, and especially in Teams where we just landed last yeah. fall, it's really important that the load time is as short as possible. Um, and so having all this work done and on start in an imperative manner is not the best approach to that. We'd much rather go into a declarative model. In which case, something like the name manager, instead of setting set, set x equal to three, you would just say x equals three. And it would just be true throughout your entire application. It's declarative, it's data flow. It can recalc if it's doesn't have to, if it be still dynamic. Um, it just recalcs based on a formula as opposed to being imperatively set with a function. So that's a, one area we're very, we're working on right now, um, very much uh, to get that out the door. What do you recommend people do to get involved and find out more? Um, they can go to the GitHub site uh, today. It's at you know, github.com slash Microsoft slash power dash FX. All the documentation is there. You can see all the comments and, and stuff that people are talking about in discussions there right now. Um, it's also in our docs. So I think it'll be dual for quite a while between the two. And we're still trying to extract it from uh, what goes on in Canvas apps. Hmm. If people want to play with it today, of course, it's already in Canvas apps. Right. And people can experience it and see where, it, where, it's, where it's coming from and see how it's applied in that domain and to see where it might, how it might be applied to other domains. Um, we also introduced a new ALM tool in January that allows you to take a Canvas app and write it out as YAML files that right. you can use VS Code with and check in and check out of GitHub. So we we, we definitely have an eye to what professionals need um, to maintain and manage large scale applications that are written in PowerFX. And so we're, we're getting feedback on that right now as well. This is great. Thanks for this time, Greg. I know you've spent as much time probably talking about PowerFX lately as you do actually working on it, but I appreciate the time. Uh, no problem. Thank you for having me.